Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I wanted to share with you how you can use visual effects to help create a good composition for your shot after you've finished shooting it. Now this is a really valuable technique because sometimes after you're done shooting, you come back and realize that the composition of the scene just isn't really working out very well, and the viewer's eye needs a little bit more help so that it knows what to be looking at. Alright, so for the first step, let's hop into File, New, and a new VFX editing scene. If we just collapse some of these windows, what we're going to want is this big one in the middle. I'm just going to make sure that is right in our frame of view here. Okay, so now I'm going to import my footage. I'm just going to go open, and I'm going to grab this video. If we play through, that loads things into the cache, and I'm going to go about that far, 140 frames. I'm going to go to playback and set end frames, and that'll just make that the end there. And this is a little bit strange, but to move the time kind of cursor thing here on the timeline, what you do is you hit shift and hold the right mouse button. But in here in the movie editor, you can just left click on this and drag it. So it's a little bit inconsistent there, but that's how to navigate around on the timeline if you're wondering how to do that. But our first step here is going to be to track this footage. And it's actually pretty easy to track just because I wasn't moving the camera around that much. So it'll be pretty simple for us to get a nice 3D track. I'm just going to go ahead and place down some markers on nice high contrast points, kind of like this. So control and left click will add in a marker. And then if we go down here to track and just track that forwards, we get something like this. Now you can see I wasn't at the start of the footage when I started tracking that, so let's track it backwards in the footage. And you can see along the timeline here, this little yellow means that it is tracked. Now if we want to monitor a track and make sure that it's not slipping up with it selected, you can just hit L and then play back. And we can see this is doing pretty well. L will lock your view to the track so you can see really well what it's doing. So that's the basics of tracking. Let's just go ahead and track this all real quick. With this shot in particular, my focus is pretty heavy, so the farther back in the background we go, the more jittery the tracks can get. So if I track this, for example, maybe around here, let's just track that and see what it looks like. You can see if we zoom out a little bit, it's kind of bumping around. If it's too crazy, what we can do is go to track and then just turn down the weight so that it doesn't mean quite as much in the final solve. But I think this is actually all right. This trick here is just something to be aware of. So eventually, it'd be good to have at least 8 tracks throughout the footage. We only really need them to be active on our keyframes, which I'm going to show you how to add in in a second here. But I've got most of these tracks going throughout the whole of the footage, and they're looking pretty good. So I think this should be a good track. If we go over here to where it says solve and click that, that displays this solve panel. And the first settings we want to add in here are the keyframe A and keyframe B. And these are pretty important. What you're going to want to do is scrub around in your footage to a point where you can see the perspective really shifts. And I'd say somewhere around this point is probably good. So if we start at maybe around 70 or 71, and then this big camera move ends kind of close to 116, I believe. So I'm going to type that in as keyframe B. So that's our keyframe set, and these two points are the points where we want to make sure that there are at least eight tracks tracked, because it won't solve very well if you don't have that going on. So for refine here, I didn't know my focal length, so I'm just going to set it so that it refines that, and we can click solve camera motion. Now I got a solve error of 0.25 pixels, which is pretty incredible. I'd say this is going to be a nice track for us. Full screen. So for reconstruction, if we want to split the window up here, I'd say this side will be good for turning into our 3D view. So if we go up here, 3D viewport, hey, <laughs> nice. All right, so I'm going to select my camera here, go to camera constraints, and I'm going to make sure I have a camera solver enabled. And you can immediately see we've got lots of points going down all the way over here. This is kind of a mess right now. So what I'm going to do is set an origin. I'm going to use this track here on the ground and go set origin. And you can see stuff starts moving around over here, but we don't have to be too worried about that. To set the ground plane, we're going to want this origin tracker and two others that are on the ground plane. So something like this would work. I know these are all level tracks, so this is a good way to set the ground plane. I'm going to go floor. If we take a look here, oh yes. All of our tracks are kind of lining up with the floor. They're super small here, 
so it's a little bit hard to see them. But if we select everything, they turn on a lot brighter, and you can kind of see where things are lining up. So I kind of want this here to be the center of attention, so I'm going to get something that is really close to the center of this. I'm going to go for this barrel up here, and you can see this track lights up a little bit. And I'm just going to move that so it's in the center of the scene. So if we make this a little bit bigger with control and space, we can actually see what's going on. I'm going to just move this around to the point here in the center. If we take a look here, we can see everything is really huge. So first I'm going to make sure the 3D cursor is here in the center. If yours is off for some reason, you can just go Shift S and cursor to world origin. And then we want to scale everything right around the 3D cursor. So if we go period and 3D cursor, and then we can just hit S and scale everything down so that it's a much more manageable size. And now the moment of truth, let's just hit play and everything seems to be going really nice and smooth. So if I go control space again, that goes back to this view here. One thing I'm actually gonna wanna do with the camera selected is go to the camera properties here, go down into background images, drop that down a little bit, add image, let's go movie clip and make sure our movie here is selected. Now if we go zero on the number pad, that goes right into camera view and we can see everything is starting to line up. One thing I like to do just to be organized while we're still rotating around the 3D cursor, I'm gonna go R and Z and just line that Y axis up with the floorboards going on there. So something like that is a little bit nicer. Let's just get a good look at it here. There we go. And I'm just gonna line that right up with the corner. Now our scene is really nicely lined up. Let's go into a new tab, general layout. Here we go. Over in another blender scene, I have this pre-cooked up kind of pipe layout going on. These are all pipes that are completely free. I downloaded them from Gumroad. And you can see we got this guy here, who I'm not going to try and pronounce his name, but he's provided these for completely free. And that's really nice. Over here in the scene full of pipes, I've gone control C and copy objects. And then back in my other blender file, I'm just going to go control V and that will paste them in. Okay, everything is still rotating around the center point, so let's go period and make that back to medium point. And I'm just gonna grab these with G, move them kinda close to where our camera is here, and I'm gonna kinda rotate these so they're a little bit oriented like this. And you can see these are along the ground. That's looking pretty nice. And what really matters is the camera view, so let's take a look at that. You can see we got all these pipes just lined up really nicely. Of course, we can mix and mash these so that they're doing a bit different stuff. I'm gonna grab this and kind of move it over here. Maybe I'll drop that in there and we can just scrub through the whole footage to see how things are lined up. Nice. I think what I wanna do is make it so that this board is a little bit covered up. So I'm gonna grab this pipe down here and just go G, move that into around there. So the basic idea of what we want to do with all these pipes, instead of adding more noise to the scene that just distracts the eye, we kind of want to hem in the main focal point here with all these pipes so that it's really certain what you want the viewer to focus on. So I'm just going to grab these ones up here, kind of move them down a little bit so that the focus is a little bit tighter on the character here. Very nice. And these are all moving exactly like the camera since we tracked everything in, so that's great. We can just play that back and see how it's working. Very nice. Okay, so if we render this right now, I believe we're in Eevee, and things just look not so amazing. <laughs> I'm going to switch to Cycles so that things are a little bit more realistic. Now if we take a close look at this environment, there's a lot of really dark parts actually, so we should probably match up the lighting a little bit here. If we go to World Settings and just turn this color down to something not quite black but very dark, our pipes become these black objects, which is really cool. Maybe a little bit more light would help. There we go, something like that's good. And now that these are all really dark, you aren't focusing quite as much on the detail of them as you are focusing on the main focal point, which is exactly what we want. Now another thing that could help us to make it so that you're not focusing on the detail of them quite as much is if we add in some depth of field. This is a really shallow focus going on, so let's just make sure that these are matching up with our original footage and they're slightly out of focus as well. So how do we do this exactly? Well, if we go up here to this little drop down, we can display the motion tracks. If you look real closely here, you can see all the little tracks. And if we go back into the camera view, you can see this is the one we tracked on top of the barrel. And this part is really nicely in focus. So I'm just going to go shift and right mouse button and that'll drop the cursor right around there. If we take a look, hey, 
That's good in 3D space. It's always a good thing to check. Now let's go Shift A and add in an empty for the camera to focus on. If we hop once more into the camera view, let's select the camera, go to the camera settings down here. We can make background images go away for now and check depth of field. And now we can just use this little dropper tool, select the empty, and now that's where the focus will be. Now I found if you turn down the f-stop here, then things get a little bit more blurry. And if we look at the rendered right now, things really aren't that blurry. So let's take this down to about a 0.5-ish. Now I just did some digging around, <laughs> and if we have backgrounds enabled like this, you can't really see the blurriness of these. They are definitely blurry, but there's really sharp edges right where the background begins. So if we uncheck background images, you can see things are really nicely out of focus. And if we render them, things will be nicely out of focus as well. Okay, so basically we just have pipes that are moving around the same way as the camera. So how are we going to composite this all together? Well, I'm glad you asked. If we go over here to the camera properties and then down to where it says film and then check transparent, that will make it so that our background is this nice big checkerboard. And you can see that'll all be transparent and we can just paste these right over top of our footage. Now I'm going to take my samples down to something around 50 just so things will go a little bit faster. And if we go down to adaptive sampling, that'll make things a lot faster as well. Under advanced, I usually like to drop that down and make sure that the random seed for the samples changes when it's on a different frame. So if we just select this little clock, Every time the frame changes, it'll use a different randomness seed, and that'll kind of help the noise pattern look a little bit better, even though we're at lower samples. Now, I would be a very poor teacher indeed if I didn't mention real quick that in your render settings, you definitely want, under color management, filmic to be standard. And that's something you always want to do when you're incorporating CG elements into live action footage. So let's give this a quick render. Nice, we got pipes. All right, let's tie this all together in compositing. If we go over here to this tab and check use nodes, I'm going to go control space so things are a little bit bigger, and I'm going to go N so that sidebar is out of the way. Okay, we've got render layers right here. I'm just going to go shift A, input, and movie clip, and we immediately already have our movie clip here, which is nice. Now I'm going to go shift A, color, and alpha over, and if I drop the image from the movie clip into the top socket here, nothing happens because we're not viewing it right now. So with Node Wrangler enabled, I'm going to go Control shift and Left-Click on the Alpha Over node, and that'll give us this nice little preview here. Hey, look at this. Our pipes are doing a pretty good job of framing this scene, so we know exactly what to look at. But right now, they aren't really matching up with the scene very well. One thing we're probably going to want to do is try and match up the lighting. If we go back to Previous up here, we can see our tabs reappear, and if we go into Layout, Let's add in some area lights. Okay, so in our 3D scene here, I happen to know, since I got the footage, that there is a big blue light over in this direction, and there's a red light coming from underneath everything. So let's go Shift S and make sure our cursor is in the world origin, and then go Shift A. I'm going to go down to light here, and then add in some area lights. This is pointing directly down, so let's go R, Y, and 180. So this is pointing directly up. And here in the lighting settings, let's just make sure that the size is a little bit bigger. I'm going to grab it and move it down a little bit here. And then I also would like this to be red, like the footage. So I'm going to go zero and two camera view. And if you haven't done this, we can actually make it so that the background image, instead of being halfway see-through, is completely visible here. So I cranked that up to one. And now if we select our area light again, we can actually match the color of this. So I'm going to go back into camera view, zero on the number pad, and let's find a point where this light is really strong. Under here, that's pretty strong. So I'm going to take the color of the light, take the little dropper tool here, and then just select this point. Now the colors should be matching up pretty well. And if we go into rendered view, you can see our pipes have this nice red glow about them. And you can turn up the strength if you want. I think that would match the scene a little bit better. But I'm going to take a little bit of artistic license here and just keep it kind of low. Maybe somewhere around 20 would be good, so we know it matches up, but it's not distracting. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Let's duplicate this area light with Shift-D. I'm going to move it over to the side here on the Y axis. I'm going to grab it, move it up a little bit, and then rotate it on the X by about 90 degrees. Oh, my goodness. It's still rotating around the 3D cursor. So let's switch this to be median point again. R, X, 90 degrees. Hey, now it's shining the right direction. And you can see here it says area 001. That means it's a different area light than the one we had before. And if we switch this to be kind of a blue color, things will start looking pretty good, I'd say. Now in the scene, we'll really only be able to see it here on these pipes, I think. So if we take a little bit of a closer look at these, 
might want it to be quite a bit brighter than this because this is kind of like our key light. If we switch it to be around 50, that matches up quite a bit better. And we can see these pipes look like they're in the same scene here. Okay, let's hit F12 one more time and render this out. Nice. So these pipes match up with the lighting. They match up with the camera movement. I'd say they might be a little bit dark for this scene here. Probably what we really want is them to be fairly dark so that they don't defeat the purpose of adding them in and take away attention from the main focus here. But in this case, they're a little bit too dark. So I'm just going to crank up the world settings a little bit here. Now we can see them a little bit better and they look quite a bit more realistic just because the whole scene is this light. Now one thing I'm not a huge fan of is the way this pipe sticks out like this. But fortunately, they're fairly customizable, so we can just grab this and rotate it a little bit. Maybe move it in a little bit more. Something like this might work. Okay, I kind of like this setup. So we got this steampunk guy, we got these steampunk pipes, and they move around nicely. Now if you're interested in learning more about visual effects, I've created a tutorial for you, and in this tutorial, I'll share how you can use Blender to integrate your CG objects into your live action footage. There's five different tips that I go over, and I really think this can help you out quite a bit. Now to get this tutorial, there's a link in the description, and that leads to an email sign up page, and this is just a good way to keep connected so that you can be the first to know when I upload a new tutorial. But other than that, I hope you have an excellent day, and cheers!